because one is what we are doing, which, which operation, then pitfall two was what? Multiple internal rates of return. Pitfall number three was what? Yes, no IRR. So now we have pitfall four. Mutually exclusive projects. Assume that you consider two projects, but you could choose only one. And you may take two projects and two procedures of estimation, IRR and MPV. I have to stop here for a moment and uh, make you think. Why, why at all we are talking about that? You know, we just have the project and that's it. It's good, we accept it. It's not good, we do not accept it. Yes, but we do not have money without limits. We have some limits with our potential of investing. So sometimes, or rather very often, we have some money and two fantastic projects, but not enough money for both. Mm. Yes, even if supposedly both of them are okay. What to do in this particular problem? Because let's say one costs a million and another costs a million, together two million, and we have only one million in the pocket. What to do? Okay, now we have to have a close look on that. So we have these two projects, project one and project two. Project one, we have the investment of 100 and in the year one, which ends the project, we have 220. Such a nice project. And project two, in the year zero, we make the investment of 10,000 and then in the year one, we have 16,500. So now we could approach both of these projects with the same um, set of principles. Obviously and naturally what we should do, we should do calculate what, because it is the easiest, we should calculate NPV we should calculate net present value. It's pretty obvious because what? Yes, because it will give us this project in real money. But as well, we could calculate this using the procedure of internal rate of return. Why? Firstly, because it's a fantastic tool of comparison internal rate of return. Nice percentages, it gives us imagination how profitable it is. But as well, secondly, we have a look how many times the sign changes. In the project one, how many times? Exactly, only once. Brilliant, we could with no problem do internal rate of return calculations. And in the project two, what happens? How many times the sign changes? That's right, exactly in the same way, only once, from minus to plus, only once. So, are we entitled to do the procedure of IRR? Yes, we could do it, no problem. So, now we are doing these calculations. Obviously, I jumped a bit faster because it would take some time to find this internal rate of return but as a matter of fact let me come back we have this project one and project two in case of project one internal rate of return is 120 percent wow what a fantastic project in project two the internal rate of return is 65%. Still, 
pretty good pretty good so the project one has a higher internal rate of return but the project two has positive and quite high internal rate of return so in principle they could be both approved obviously on the basis that our required internal rate of return let's is say i don't know 30 okay so both are even 20 okay it will give us better scale we we require 20 one gives 120 another gives 65 brilliant both should be or could be approved because both have positive irr and much higher than our our required one okay but unfortunately we encounter this problem that in fact we do not have supposedly so much money to do them both assume that we have only say 10,000 and nothing more so if we have 10,000 you could do only one this one or this one yes because we do not have enough money so what are we doing again with this principle we should decide for the project one but but however it is higher for project one and according to the rules we probably should undertake the project one because of the higher irr but in real circumstances we probably should into con should take into our consideration the project two despite smaller irr why anybody could give me a nice explanation why maybe maybe a small hint in our in our thought will be look project one costs us 100 so and we have 10,000 in our pocket so we go for the project one but still we need to find what we do with our remaining 9,900 say dollars what do we do with them we should find more actually 99 projects like this will it be easy i don't know probably not so let's go back right so we probably would take into consideration the project two despite smaller irr because still it's higher than our required irr but project two gives much much greater volumes in uh, in count of net present value and if so we should calculate this and prove this and this would be your your say homework uh, or uh, or later work maybe somebody would calculate it now because normally we would do it at the classes but i will not give you all answers on slides so please do some job uh, yourself right okay so this mutually exclusive projects um, are really a common and probably we would say very often a situation at uh, at uh, companies when they invest because what happens they often have to choose from several alternative very good projects yes uh, they have to choose between one way of doing this and another and another or or maybe different industries different places you know they would probably do all the projects possible if they have enough capital so 
they, they need to choose from among mutually exclusive projects. And this is this pitfall number four um, explained in practice that using the IRR may be sometimes misleading. Misleading in a sense that it neglects the size of the project. As it's uh, easily to see here, yes, the sizes are hugely different. Project 2 is 100 times larger than Project 1. 100 times, not twice, not 10 times, 100 times. So we uh, compare a very small project with a very large project. And the first one is obviously more profitable but the second one gives us more money to our pocket, right? And, um, and now we have another sort of example, brilliant for this, um, for this idea. Let's calculate in this, these two projects. We have project D and project E. And could you please um, firstly, do the calculation of net present value at 10. At 10, um, possibly you could make uh, an attempt of uh, calculating with uh, 15 would be fast and then uh, or at 20 in order to calculate IRR. But nevertheless, calculations are only one thing and we will talk as well about something uh, really linked with that. So we have project D and project E and it looks like this investment 10,000 and then the uh, inflow of money 20,000 and here is twice as big 20,000 and inflow of money 35. Brilliant. So what we have because uh, as they are mutually uh, um, uh, exclusive so for example, Project D is a manually controlled machine, so it costs 10,000. And in Project E is the same sort of machine, but sort of computer control, right? And how could we evaluate this project? Look, IRR in case of the first one, yes, is 100. And, um, and then IRR in case of the second one is 75, right? Percent. And net present value at 10% rate is 8,182 in project D and 11,818 in project E. So how could we choose? Because they are both very good projects. But if we decide basis on IRR, it we will come to the result of 100%, uh, uh, which means that the project D is better. But if we decide basis NPV, we should say that the project is better because it brings more, 11,818. So how to make the proper comparison? It's hard to say, honestly, because, uh, because it depends. It depends on circumstances. Because the decision for a choice of the project when IRR and NPV give a contradictory preference, actually, it's not straightforward and hugely will depend on circumstances. But it's worth to un underline that internal rate of return is unreliable in sort of ranking, comparing projects of largely different scale. You remember what I, what I uh, talked about when we s say about largely different scale uh, we meant this, like uh, here is 100 and here is 10,000. 
You know, they are very, 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 very different. So even despite that IRR in the um, first one was higher, then it does not really bring us the real um, useful uh, knowledge. Where is that? So, yeah, L then we could discuss, then we could discuss of, uh, on the point that um, how large is the difference? Because we have as well here something interesting. When we look closely, the project E is twice as big as project D. So is it a large difference in scale or not? Nobody knows. It's hard to say. And then NPV, is it finally so much different? I don't know. It will, be, it will depend on the circumstances. And obviously it's the second thing was this four uh, pitfalls, I mean, rather three at the beginning, that it's unreliable for ranking projects of different patterns of cash flow. So yes, so here this underlining number one is about pitfall number four, and number two here is about three first pitfalls. Brilliant. Finally, we came to the pros and cons. And if we, uh, if we look uh, on this, we have to do, conclude that IRR has a large number of advantages. I mean, large number, large solid advantages. The two are here, closely related to NPV, often leading to identical decisions. That's true. Often it leads to identical decisions in real figures, real terms. And it is very easy to understand because we compare it to what we want. We receive certain rentability, profitability, and we compare it to what we want. So it's easy to understand and easy to communicate. Then, obviously, there are some disadvantages. Yeah, as this tool may, may result in multiple answers or not deal um, with co non-conventional cash flows. We know when it's non-conventional, non-normal, we cannot do it. You know, it will be either uh, multiple or there will be none. If there is plus minus plus minus more than once, then it doesn't make any sense to calculate. Unfortunately, because it's a great tool. And then uh, the, the second sort of set of uh, disadvantages is it may lead to incorrect decisions in comparisons of mutually exclusive investments, largely because IRR, as we know, doesn't say anything about what? Yes, it doesn't say anything about scale. It doesn't say anything about about real money this is just a percentage nothing about real money right so we have uh, dealt uh, quite extensively with internal rate of return which is a brilliant tool um, we will have another short example in the last part but I hope that now you have a very, very large and solid knowledge about NPV, how to calculate this, because it's not too complicated. Then calculating of uh, IRR is sort of um, tedious and maybe be a bit um, tricky, as we know, but there's a formula and when we judge it, uh, more or less correctly, then it's easy to, to calculate. But in all my examples, everything was, um, nearly everything was shown clearly. So please remember about IRR, about these four pitfalls or drawbacks, uh, pros and cons. And I honestly hope when you are the boss of your own company, or the company of your parents, dear honorable parents, or Alibaba or any other, you will now know how to calculate NPV, IRR, and anything like that. 
Please remember when you are running a hotel business, remember what? That most likely refurbishment, so IRR in investing in, investing in hotel, it's not really a good thing to calculate. But you might, okay, at least in shorter period. Fine, brilliant.